All right, guys, in the previous video, we looked at a technique where we can use only one material and have a whole range of standard Decentraland colors available to us in Blender. Once again, with one material only. And this was the amazing thing about UV mapping, where we can have a whole selection of colors on one image and then we can point towards different section of that email uh, of that image and assign that particular color in that area to a specific area on the object so because we have all these restrictions on the scenes in terms of how many materials we can actually use this was really helpful and now if we take the same technique and apply it to a different application we should be able to achieve things that many of you may want to do. One example of that is actually visible here on that board that is framed green. That board, that text content on that board is actually an image that is being projected onto an object. It's, it's like a skin that we can pull over that object and um, you can prepare an image like that in Photoshop. You can download it from the internet and then you can just use it as an image inside Blender. But the thing is, you have to know how to use it and you have to know how to adjust it because more often than not, the image doesn't necessarily fit very nicely on that object. Sometimes it's incorrectly positioned, rotated in, in a 90 degree or it doesn't go all the way to the edges. So you need to be able to edit that that. In, in, in which way that image is projected onto that object. So we're going to have a look at that right now. By the way, also the wall with that blue love background is an image that is being placed there in the same fashion. Also that frame, that golden frame that you see, it's a little bit of a more complex implementation of an image in the UV editing mode in Blender. But I'm going to show you some of these basic things and maybe I, I will also show you an interesting implementation here that I did on the computer screen and on the keyboard of that notebook. So this is just a basic Blender object with an image applied to it, as you can see here in the shape of a keyboard and a screen. You can do pretty much all of that stuff yourself after watching this video. So, all right, guys, let's jump into Blender real quick. So in, this is the object we've worked with in the previous videos as well. This is our this is our basic table that we created. Now, what we are going to do, or we, what we are going to try, is to apply an image to that center base of that table. So, whereas before we applied an image to the whole table and then selected specific areas and assign a specific colors to those areas. Now we just want to use one image only on that face. And this is not always that straightforward. And I get this wrong a lot of the time. Let's see if we can figure it out together. I think that process of troubleshooting is always very helpful for everyone watching because you are going to face many of the same issues. And before we continue, let's quickly define the workspaces we're going to use. It's again, the material section here. It's going to be the shading section here. And it's going to be the UV editing area here. So uh, let's probably start just with the shading area. The shading area allows us to edit the surface, apply it. It helps us applying materials to surfaces, any kind of visual properties of objects. Uh, all right, what do we do next? We are now in the object mode. We do have a basic material present here, but no additional images applied to it yet. So I would say, let's just try first to switch into the edit mode. And the logic behind that would be because we do want to only edit one face and not the whole table object, it might be better to switch into that mode because these modes sometimes function slightly differently based on what you have used when you did a specific action. So right now we do want to import an image that I prepared 
Um, before we've used that UV map here and now we're just going to use a random image that I want to apply to that particular surface here. So if I switch to the edit mode, I should be able to you know, get the associations right. So if I move it over by, you know, just drag and drop, let it go here, connect color to base color. Um, something happens that I was expecting kind of to happen is that it's just applied the image to all of the table. And I think this is happening because this material we had defined earlier is a material that is used for the whole table. And now that even though we have selected a particular face, we still have edited the material that is used everywhere. So the image has been applied everywhere. So in order to resolve that, what could we possibly do? I would say we will not get around using two materials here because we cannot leave the object without a base material. And we do want to have a material that is different for that particular face. So we have to use two materials here. We will not get around that, right? So in this case, if we just go back one step to keep things easy for this tutorial, let's quickly go back on that activity. Let's create a second material here. Boom. And for that second material, we just assign it to that surface here. Since we have the surface selected, we can just take that material. Oh, we have to quickly click on new for it to work. And then we have to assign it to that. Right, this is how this is supposed to work. Let's quickly check. So let's call this material center so that we can distinguish those. And Let's call this rest of table. So the idea he here is that the table is supposed to be using that material and that that particular face is going to use that particular material. Now we can assign this material also to any other face. Like if we would select this face here, switch over to center material and assign it. Now that material would use that material. We don't want that. We want everything else to be white. So let's assign this back to the regular material. So now we are only going to work with the material that is assigned to the center of the table. I hope this is not too complex for this tutorial in terms of the way I explain it. I will just import the image one more time into the workspace here and now I will attach color to base color and what you see here is now that by importing that image we have associated it only with that material material center that we used for the centerpiece if we switch over to the regular material that is used everywhere else we don't have that association with the image so this is kind of an important distinction in the beginning, when I attached the image, I applied it to the only material that we had defined that was used everywhere. So per default, we've changed the underlying material that was used everywhere. We didn't want that. We want to have a separate material so that we can have a distinctive center of piece here. So hopefully this makes sense. Um, right now, we have done the first part of the job and now we have to move over to the second part of the job, which means Right now, it's just a weird part of that image that we see, but we cannot clearly recognize the image there. It doesn't look nice. For this, we need to switch over to UV editing. And here you can see that when we select that centerpiece that we've just applied this image to, that selection is represented by this selection here. It's a small little rectangle that is only covering a small part of the image. So if you want to see the whole image on that surface here, we need to expand the selection across the whole image. And to do so, we have to select it with the mouse or by clicking A on the keyboard. And then if we click S for scaling, and if we can drag it out and then use the letter G 
to move it further to the left and then scale to drag it out further let's say this is where where we are happy with it now if i change the view here you will see that we have projected a lot more of that image onto the surface right so this is looking actually quite cool now i think you start to understand that you can apply this to anything if you have an image with text like we had earlier in the building here we could just put that image onto that object that i've put together in a minute or so and you can put that stuff onto walls onto computers wherever you need to whenever you whenever it doesn't make sense to go in and build out every detail of an object that would consume a lot of triangles inside the central land, which is a scarce resource right now. Um, you can just apply an image and only use one material to do that. So in our particular example now, we have to use two materials because the rest of the table remains white. So this is the absolute minimum we can do. I think, I think it's looking good. I think this, this, this should be really helpful to you guys. Hopefully we were able to cover this appropriately. Uh, please let me know if this maybe wasn't clear enough and I might just give it another go or something. All right, guys. Thank you and uh, have a nice day.